to conclude a nuclear cooperation agreement. Meanwhile, Iran's standoff with the United States is escalating as the country's president called it a nuclear state just days ago. So there seems to be a fair amount of nuclear power conversation out there these days. So we decided to speak to one of the lead experts on atomic energy, Lady Barbara Judge. She is chairwoman of the UK Atomic Energy Authority. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Lady Barbara. I want to ask you, when you hear about Jordan and before that Abu Dhabi, going into the nuclear power business, it, it raises some eyebrows. It's a bit surprising to see really the, the Arab world moving forward with uh, nuclear development with U.S. okay, seal of approval. Why? Why is that happening? What? Well, in, in actual fact, it's happening because Abu Dhabi, two, for two reasons. In Abu Dhabi, where they actually have, as you know, lots of oil and actually gas too, the Abu Dhabi government wants to be a leader in the region and indeed the world in multiple types of energy. So they're building a big city called Mazdar City, which is all renewable energy. And they understand that in order to deal with the world, you need to, as it's growing forward, the energy that they have in oil and gas might run out. And they want to start now to build nuclear power plants in the absolute best way, the highest and the best standards, and the most involved in the international agreements. With respect to Jordan, it's slightly different. The Jordanians don't have oil of their own at all. They actually import it from Saudi Arabia. And they're very worried about the fact that the Saudi Arabian price is going up. So for them, having nuclear power is really much more of an imperative. And they're a, very, they're a nation that doesn't have a lot of money, but they have a lot of uranium. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is they're selling their uranium in order to pay for the power plants, which they need for, petro for petroleum and also for desalination. So for the Jordanians, it's an imperative. And for for Abu Dhabi, it's to be a world leader. Because what we know for sure is that in the coming world, we're going to need all kinds of energy, oil, gas, coal, renewables, and nuclear. It's so interesting because the Jordan Atomic Energy Commission back in 2008 signed a joint venture agreement with Francis Arriva to mine the uranium that they have there. You hear about a tremendous amount of interest from foreign corporations, from the Koreans, from the French, in nuclear power and really providing some leadership within this industry. When are we going to see U.S. corporations play some catch up here? Well, you're exactly right. I was involved in that Jordanian arrangement. I was there because the U.K. was trying to bid for those uranium rights also, which the French got. The fact is that most countries of the world that are interested in nuclear are ginning it up now. And America, and we have, after all, a very good technology in the U.S., America really needs to start thinking about doing what they need to do with respect to nuclear power now because it takes seven to ten years to build a power plant. Mm -hmm. So we need to start thinking about it because we're going to be in the same position. We're going to need all those kinds of energy, oil, gas, coal, renewables, and nuclear. But it's a regulatory problem in the U.S. We have to get the, the technology approved by the regulatory authorities and get some incentives in place for existing companies to build nuclear power plants. Right, we did see the Obama administration just uh, said that they would provide a total of $54 billion in loan guarantee authority for nuclear projects. But when you speak to the GEs of the world, other corporations, they say that without you know, more support from the government, it's just so hard to compete with corporations that have their own home countries backing. How do you undercut on pricings when the Koreans are backing their corporations, when the French are backing their home corporations? Are we going to see that happen without any kind of state subsidy of nuclear development? Well, you're exactly right. In the UK, we have the same problem. We have believe we believe that all of our power plants should be built not by the government funds, but by corporate funds. But there can be incentives. I rather think that with, with for America, we could give tax incentives to companies that are building power plants and other kinds of incentives so that the existing power producers will go into nuclear. And from what I understand, there are a number of power producers in the U.S. who have filed applications to build new power mm -hmm. plants or extend the life of the old ones. So I think we're starting here. We just need the government to give a little more 
to give a little more encouragement to those companies in order to get on the bandwagon. We'll look for that. Thank you so much, Lady Barbara, for your perspective. Stay with us. We're going to head to Vancouver. Tonight on Charlie Rose, a conversation about Iran, remembering the revolution, and a look at the unrest rising in the country today. Watch at 8 and 10.